you've got to play the best golf course. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about the best championship in the world, the, the, the British Open, the Open, is the, in my eyes, is the premier tournament of the world. And if you want to enhance it, you've got lots of competition from the Masters, remember? Yeah. <clears throat> if you want to keep the British Open, I'm saying the British Open, but we all know it's the Open. If you want to keep the Open as number one, you better pick the number one golf course. Yeah. And the quickest way to do that, to enhance the Open, is to play at Turnbury. Because it's the best golf course, it's the best championship golf course yes. in the country today, bar none. Yeah. I don't see anything that comes close. Right. And I mean, nobody's played. I've been. This, you know, this is my 62nd Open I'm attending. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I played in the most Opens, 46 yeah. in a row, yeah. and won it in three different decades. So I speak with authority. And you know, I've played most of the. I've played all the Open venues. There's nothing that compares to nothing. Mm. Uh, look, I, I like Birkdale. I like it, but I, I don't like it. I don't like it as much as Muirfield. I don't like it as much as other as some other venues. I, I like it very much. It's a wonderful course, and I shouldn't <laughs> I shouldn't be comparing it to to uh, Turnbury and Muirfield and course of course I shouldn't. It's a wonderful golf course. Yeah. Let me rephrase it. It's a wonderful. It's a one. It's a lovely golf course, and I think uh, Lytham and, and St Anne's has the best back nine of. Any golf course, the back nine, it's not 18 holes. I think the back nine at Lytham is the best nine holes of any championship. Yeah. Rory is a streaky putter. Mm. And if you, look at the, if you look at the superstars in the past, there only been about 12 superstars in golf. In my opinion, you've got to win six majors to be a superstar. I could be wrong, it's my opinion. Yeah. We use the word great too loosely. I mean, a guy with one tournament, a major, and they call him a superstar. He's not. Yeah. Um, every superstar, Nicholas, Palmer, Trevino, Watson, Ben Hogan, all great putters. Yeah. All great putters. And Rory is a streaky putter. Uh, he has probably the best golf swing in the world today. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to say. Uh, look, uh, there are a few of them that have. Uh, Louis Westhazen has as good a swing. Jason Day has as good a swing. Justin Rose has as good a swing. Uh, Adam Scott has as good a swing. There are about seven of them that have that are, have equally a good a swing. Yeah. But the, the swing is not the thing. The thing that wins tournaments is putting. Spieth comes off almost every round of golf he plays saying, it was my B game, it was my C game. Yeah. And he is so good at putting, he is by so far the best putter in the world, that he can play badly and still win. Yeah. Because the old saying, you drive for show and putt for no. You know, it's very interesting. If you took the 30 best players that ever lived, 28? 29 and 30. Ballesteros, Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, accuracy of 30. And they were all number one. Yeah. How about that? So what does that tell you? There's a message, a very strong message that you drive for show and you putt for dough. Yeah. Tiger Woods was going to be the greatest athlete the world had ever known. Not only the best golfer the world had ever known. Yeah. By a mile he was going to be known. He won't now, I don't think. He might, I don't think so. Mm. But and he went and had lessons from all these people. Different lessons. He said to me at the Masters, he said, I'm confused. Here's a lesson from this guy, this guy, this guy. They all tell you something different. What the hell did he go and have a lesson for when you win the US Open by 15 shots yeah. and you're winning one out of every four yeah. tournaments? Are you crazy? Yeah. But all I can tell you that anybody who's been in his position, he must be he must be suffering terribly. Now, he probably, if you asked him that, he might say, no, I'm not, I'm fine. Yeah. But when you've been that superstar, the big, the important thing in his life was golf. Because you, you brainwash yourself to become the best. Yeah. And that's the most important thing in your life. Uh, when you see this, this, this genius and the things that are happening to him, you know, he, he gets divorced, he has contracts cancelled, he, uh, he, he, hits, he hits chips from here to there.
yeah. and he used to chip like an eel. Then he chips over the green. And let's rather put it this way: the things that he that have happened to him. Yeah. My when I treated, when I saw what they did to him, when I saw what CNN put on the TV, I had a tear in my eye because in this country you wouldn't be allowed to do that. You've got to be found guilty. And they were saying drunken driving. He wasn't drunken driving at all. Yeah, no, I thought. So now straight away half the world read saw that. And then they show a picture where him looked like he'd been in jail for ten years. You saw the picture. Yeah. You know, and then you see him standing there and they're showing this with the police at night, in the middle of the night, can't say his A B C and walk on the road. You're not allowed to do that in Britain. Once you're found guilty you can show it. But you can't do that. And I just I don't understand how you can do something like that. And to me, I treat it, let's give the man some love, which would Mandela would have done. Yeah. And before Tiger Woods came along, I remember this so vividly, they said, you won't find three guys dominated like player Nicholas and Palmer ever again. I said, you talking nonsense. I said, that doesn't work like that in life. And Tiger Woods comes along and dominates it more. Yes. There is somebody out there that can come out. If Tiger Woods was playing now, okay? If Tiger Woods was at his best now. 24 years of age. Yeah. yeah. There's nobody can play like Tiger Woods. Yeah. There's nobody playing today that could play like Tiger. Yeah. And that is a fact. That's not my opinion. That's that is a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why shouldn't there be somebody else like Tiger? Are you going to tell me this whole planet doesn't have another Tiger Woods? Yeah. No, 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 no. Because I, I think it's very overrated caddies. Ben Hogan never asked his caddy, a, the best player that ever lived, Ben Hogan, right? Never asked his caddy a damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't see Nicholas asking his caddy things all the time. Yeah. I didn't see Palmer asking the caddy things all the time. I didn't ask the caddy things all the time. Yeah. You know, it's like somebody said to Trevino, who's your coach? He said, if I find somebody that can beat me, I'll have a lesson from him. <laughs> so, but everybody's different again. We come back to this opinion. Some guys feel they have to have the caddy. They have to have the caddy. I mean, Ben Hogan, Sam Snead, Jack Nicholas, Arnold Palmer, all the superstars of the world. We never had a yardage in our life. I never played in an open championship saying, how many yards is it? We never knew about that. Yeah. We used our eye. Yeah. And we did damn well. We did as well as with yardage. Yeah. So, you know, some things, there again, it's all opinion. Yeah. Never said, how far is that? Yeah. I said, ah, it's a four iron. We were right. See, some guys say, I have to have a good caddy. It's purely personal. I'll answer that and say it's purely personal. For me, I don't put great emphasis on a caddy. There were two things at Augusta. I was extremely happy because, you know, he blew the Open at uh, Carnoustie. That he had a chance to win the Open and other majors, and that's why I was so pleased, because of the continuous opportunity he has to win majors, eventually won one. Yeah. And the sequel to that, the greatest sportsmanship I've ever seen in my 64 years as a pro was Justin Rose. What the world saw him do, and young people around the world, uh, you know, with all this money, millions of first prize, and all this amount of money, I still like to see somebody has those qualities of great sportsmanship. And the way he accepted defeat, and please believe me, he was feeling like a junkyard dog. And you think, uh, he, when you think what happened on 13, had the same scores as uh, Sergio. Think about it. Yeah. And he bogeyed 17, and he missed a putt on 18, and he lost, and he still behaved impeccably. Yeah. Wow, man, I was impressed with that. That, Very to me, impressive. stuck in my mind. I was delighted Ballast, uh, that Sergio won because he'd had so many opportunities.